here to discuss topics pertaining to bipolar disorder uh, in the frame of uh, a CIMP experts panel. And we have three major uh, issues to discuss. The first is the definition of treatment resistant bipolar disorder. And this is, this is a very tricky and very uh, complex thing because, uh, first of all, bipolar disorder is, um, is a very complex disorder itself. It has many facets, um, many different patterns and constellations of uh, symptoms. Uh, it's, it's, it's a multifaceted disorder, which means that uh, each patient is radically different from other patients. And what is more important is that we don't really have agents that act equally and uh, efficaciously on all facets, all aspects, all chronological stages and all patients. Uh, so uh, this combination of complex clinical picture and complex treatment options makes the definition of refractoriness and treatment resistance very, very difficult because you might have a patient who responds very well during the treatment of acute mania, but, but then does not respond to treatment uh, when he's acutely depressed or he might do very well with acute treatment, but then does not uh, response with uh, maintenance treatment. So you might uh, need two or three years after maintenance treatment and failure to see that this patient is essentially treatment resistant. So this is a very complex thing. And also uh, a patient is resistant to agents who generally work in this condition. For example, you cannot say that uh, bipolar depressed patients are resistant to antidepressants because antidepressants in general and that's a class does not work do not work in bipolar disorder so uh, in 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 the uh, with the work we did with the CIMP treatment guidelines work group we decided that eventually we should stick to the old concept that you cannot really consider bipolar depression, uh, bipolar disorder as, as a, uh, a single disorder uh, and in this frame to define uh, treatment resistance. Instead, it's more practical to uh, decompose it and uh, focus uh, on isolated uh, facets like acute mania, so a patient is uh, treatment resistant during acute, the acute manic phase or he's resistant during the acute depressive phase or during maintenance. So uh, this is a very complex uh, area and I would uh, uh, very much like your comments. Ladies first. Thank you very much. So I think you're exactly right. Bipolar disorder is a very difficult treatment uh, uh, condition to treat and, uh, and, and particularly dif difficult, of course, in the bipolar depressive phase. Uh, in relation to the uh, to the guidelines, uh, the CIMP uh, definition and, and guidelines, one of the things that's very noticeable is how um, is, is how practical they are, but also how um, how stringent the criteria are, particularly for remission, which I think is um, uh, is is very significant. Where I come from in Australia, we have um, uh, our depression uh, bipolar depression guidelines. Uh, uh, from 2014 and don't include such stringent uh, uh, criteria, particularly for remission. And I think this has very significant implications uh, for, for research in the area. Uh, the other thing that I particularly like about those criteria is that, um, that even when uh, a depressive episode is ended and uh, um, evidenced by a drop in the Madras or the, or, or the Hamilton um, depression rating scale score, that any increase in the young rating scale, or any increase in manic or, um, or mixed mood symptoms uh, excludes the, the patient from, uh, from a re remission status. And again, that, that really helps to clarify the issues around um, uh, uh, remission in relation to bipolar depression. Which, which I think is, is, has been a, 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 very, a very positive thing in relation to, um, uh, to the criteria and definition. 
and, and certainly that um, our, our ability to to be very clear about definitions is is going to be really important in uh, in assessing both uh, both our patients clinically, but also in being able to understand and assess the the um, the evidence in relation to um, uh, to the studies that are out there on bipolar depression. It's also one 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 thing I. I I forgot to mention is that you might give, for example, an antidepressant to a, a bipolar depressive patient and you induce a mixed state. Yeah. And this mixed state, uh, psychometrically, uh, is similar to a treatment response. But yeah. uh, essentially, it's not a treatment response, it's, it's, a treat, it's, it's a deterioration of the clinical picture. So uh, I would appreciate your comments. Well, uh, I think thank you for, for tapping into such a uh, relevant topic. And, and you are saying, right, that we're, we're, discuss we're, we're talking here for a very complex, neuro neurobiologically complex and heterogeneous uh, disease, which uh, I think it's also fluid uh, when it presents, because like you have patients who present with you know, bipolar depression, but they may be actually, you know, they, you could switch them at, at, at any stage to, to mixed state or manic episode. So I think in hands of clinician, uh, the current guidelines are uh, very undefined and, and loosely defined in, in, in any way. And so because the treatment that are uh, available for bipolar disorder in general are for most part repurposed treatment, with the exception of lithium, which is one of the medication that is sort of kind of uh, standard first line treatment. The rest of the uh, treatment that exists today are either, you know, uh, antiepileptic drugs that are repurposed for um, bipolar disorder, or you have second generation um, antipsychotics, or uh, in this, uh, even in, in in some cases the uh, uh, antidepressants. So, with this in mind, you have uh, so it's like. In the hand of clinician, there's like literally no uh, so many tools in terms of like how do they sort of uh, react when they're dealing with a bipolar patient. Uh, and the one of the complex groups to treat here is bipolar depressed patient because these are a group that, uh, for most part, they have sub syndromal symptoms of depression or severe symptoms of dep depression when they present. And, um, and what's interesting is this is a high-risk group, per se, because these are patients who have a higher number of suicide attempts. These are patients who get hospitalized much more often. And, uh, and they present, uh, and the first sort of uh, presentation symptoms are severe depressive symptoms. So, um, so it really takes a, um, a, a fundamental knowledge to be able to diagnose them in, in time.